Hi, welcome everybody. We are welcome to our Tel Aviv online MBA open day. We are going to wait just a couple of minutes just to let everybody get logged in and get set up and then we will get started as soon as we can. So brilliant to see so many of you joining us already. Um, you are automatically all on mute with cameras off, um, but please do feel free to take this moment to introduce yourself using our Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So, you know, tell us who you are, perhaps where you're based, um, what's brought you to our open day today. And as I said, we'll get started in just a few minutes. So once again, welcome everyone. I can see people joining us and it does take a couple of minutes and we don't, we'll get started once we have got as many here that we are expecting. Welcome to our Tel Aviv online MBA open day. It's really brilliant to have so many of you with us today. Um, I should probably say good morning, good afternoon or good evening from depending on where you are in the world. Um, we do have a Q&A function open at the bottom of the screen today. So please use that to introduce yourself, maybe let us know where you are, where you're based, what's brought you here today. Um, and then we'll use that function later in the session as well for any questions that you might have. So I'm just gonna give it another minute or so um, as I can see lots of people joining us and I don't want anyone to miss out on the start. So we will get started in just a couple more minutes. Once again, welcome everybody. Nice to see so many of you joining us today. Um, it's filling up, so I think we'll get started in just a moment. But before we officially get started, just to let you all know how the session will run today. Um, so I will be monitoring the Q&A, so our question and answer section that we have on the bottom of your screen. I'll be monitoring that throughout today's session. So please feel free to use that to ask any questions that you've got throughout the whole presentation. Um, I can always jump in and ask those um, as we go. Or, and we will have a QA and a um, time at the end of the session as well. So we can always go through them then. Also, please feel free to um, introduce yourself in that section. So, you know, say who you are, perhaps where you're logging on from today and why you're interested in the online MBA. And then, as I said, towards the end, we will have time for lots of questions. So anyone who has got anything that they'd like to ask about, please do feel free towards the end. You will be on mute. So using the Q&A is the best function to do that. Um, so for now, um, I will put myself on mute and I'm going to hand you over to Hila, who's going to be running through our presentation today. Thank you so much, Jessica. So hi, everyone. I'm very excited. Uh, welcome to the Tel Aviv Online MBA program. Um, as Jessica said, my name is Hila Rahmani, and I'm the executive director of the program. Um, I'm managing this program alongside Dr. Shai Arel, who is the academic director. Um, unfortunately, he's unable to join us today, um, but Jessica uh, Randall is here and she's the director of our student recruitment team. And uh, both of us will be here today to tell you um, about the program. And um, so here is the agenda for today. So I will tell you a little bit about Tel Aviv University. If you, if you don't know um, so much about it, then um, here is the place to tell you a little bit. Uh, I will tell you about the Color School of Management, which we are part of, and about the Tel Aviv Online, of course. Um, that's why you're here. So I will tell you about the degree and, and about the program in general. And of course, as Jessica said, um, we will have a QA at the end of this session. Of course, uh, Jessica, if you see any other questions throughout this session, uh, we will uh, try to answer either um, through the chat or um, we'll pause for a second and answer your questions um, during, this, um, during this session. So in general, to tell you a little bit about the Tel Aviv University, um, it was established in 1956, and it's um, the largest university in Israel. We have around 1,000 full-time professors at the university and nine faculties. Um, there are 125 departments and 130 research institutes. 
Um, there's a lot more, to be honest. It's a really large university. Uh, just um, uh, in general, to tell you a little bit about it, um, we have 30,000 students. And of course, there are undergraduate, graduate, and PhD students. So as I said, quite large for, for a small country uh, such as Israel. Um, about the rankings of the university, so so many rankings um, options, and, and I included the link here for the full, uh, full list of rankings. But um, in general, to give you some, some um, examples, uh, Startup Genom uh, ranked Tel Aviv University number six in the world in producing entrepreneurs who raised capital for their firm. Um, number seven in the world in producing scales up, which are companies that have grown be, uh, beyond the initial startup stage. Uh, we were ranked by the pitch book number seven in the world for venture capital raised by our alumni. And as I said, a lot, a lot more. And you can see the full list also um, at the university website. And if you want, we can share with you um, more um, through emails and, and any other options that you can think of. In terms of the Kohler School of Management itself, um, that's where we're situated, the online program. Um, we have more than 60 full-time professors and around 250 additional professors that are teaching here. We have the largest student body within the university, um, around 3,500 students. Um, I think, I believe most of them, as you can see, are MBA and MSc students, but we also, of course, have undergraduate and PhD students. And we have the largest alumni community, um, more than 35,000 alumni, which is quite large, I think, for, for the university. In terms of the ranking of the school itself, so again, many, but uh, here are a few that I've chosen for this slide. Um, CEO World uh, Magazine ranked uh, our college school in the top 100 uh, best business schools in the world for 2023. Uh, we were ranked by Startup Ganem again, number 13 uh, as a school in producing scales up. Um, and number 13 and the second outside of the US for venture capital raised by our, our alumni uh, by PeachBook. In general about the school, it's, um, it's the first, it's the number one choice uh, among Israeli students. Um, we are awarded by Ed, Ed Universal, Five Palms of Excellence, which is the highest uh, ranking. And we are the first business school in Israel to be accredited uh, by AACSB, which is an accreditation association that we are very proud to be in uh, because we're included within the best schools, uh, business schools in the world. Um, and it's worth to, if you have a moment to, get, to go into their website and, and learn about that a little bit. Um, and I think that's why you're here to tell you a little bit about more in more detail about the online program, basically, what it has to offer you. Um, in terms of the duration of, of the degree, you can complete this degree in two years, um, but up to five years. So we take into consideration that students that are looking to do an online degree, they also look for flexibility. So that's exactly what we're uh, trying to do here to allow you to finish your degree up to five years if you need to. But of course, if you, if you can, um, we always recommend to finish it in two years. Um, that would be the, um, the minimum. Um, the academic year is split into five different terms. And in each term, you can complete up to two courses. Um, if you decide, and again, that's the flexible uh, part of it. If you decide not to take two courses because you're, um, you have other commitments or any other um, um, reasons that you can find, uh, you can always take one course instead of two. It's your basically your decision. Each course will last eight weeks. And seven weeks are going to be the course sessions. And the last week, the, the eighth weeks, will be for final examination or for you to submit your final paper. So in total, you will complete 28 credits within the degree. And I will explain a little bit more about the curriculum 
in my next slide. Um, so how, how exactly are you going to study? So the degree itself is 100% online asynchronically, meaning that if you don't want to meet with your classmates or the professors live on Zoom, then you don't have to. Everything is recorded. Everything is on our university system, the Moodle. You can find all your um, courses, all the material that you need online, and you can do everything asynchronically. Um, but what we've learned from basically from applicants and from our current students is that people today are looking more for the hybrid mode. So we are offering within this degree an option of, of joining um, the synchronic sessions, which every professor will offer one, one um, session synchronically live on Zoom um, with their students at least one, once a week. So throughout this, this seven weeks of the course, you can meet with your professor once a week, um, but you don't have to, as I said, it's optional. If you don't have time, it will be recorded, so you can always watch it whenever you want, um, but it's basically supposed to give you the time to meet with your classmates, to make discussions, to ask questions from your professors, so we're not just leaving you on your own, uh, doing everything, um, you know, um, on your on your own, basically, uh, we're allowing you to ask questions and to communicate with again with your lecturers or classmates. So the start date, uh, we have three intakes a year. You can join us either in July, October, or March, um, and the tuition fee is twenty five thousand nine hundred US dollars. But you can also pay per course if you decide. Um, we do have bursaries available for you. So if you want to apply for financial aid, you can, you can do that. We have a committee which will um, consider your application and we will give you uh, our final decision. So as I said, in terms of the curriculum of the program, so this is um, in general the way it looks like. Um, we will require you to complete 16 credits of core courses. And this is important to say that if you will start in October next year, this is going to change. We are going to change um, from 16 to 18 credits. And the 12 credits that um, we, we will ask you to do within your elective courses will be changed to 10. And the reason why we do that is because we want to be able to allow students to do more of the core courses, but also to specialize um, into spe different specializations, which I will explain in the next slide. But basically, if you're joining us um, in next July, you will do 16 credits of core courses and then 12 credits of electives. Um, you will have three different pathways to choose from. And I will explain in a minute what are those pathways and what exactly, how are they going to affect your curriculum? And in total, as I said before, 28 credits for you to complete within your degree. So what are those specific pathways, those three pathways that you can choose from? Um, so within your degree, as I said, you have elective courses and we're giving you the opportunity to focus on a specific subject. If you choose to, you don't have to. Again, very important to give you flexibility. So if you wanna uh, specialize in marketing management in a digital world or in technology and information management, you do have this option to do your elective courses in this specific specialization. And if you're not sure, and if you don't, if you're not sure what exactly you want to study and you want to learn more about everything, uh, then we give you an option to do the general MBA pathway where you can choose courses from both specializations, from both uh, options. So I want to um, elaborate a little bit about um, your choices, basically. So if you want to, if you choose the marketing management in a digital world specialization, um, you will learn, you will gain a marketing oriented perspective. Uh, it will give you better understanding of customers 
and the you will master the core and digital marketing practice. You will learn about new market development, everything that has to do with specifically with this subject. It's important to say, and, and we learned that from the head of the specialization, she keeps on saying that this is not specifically for people that are coming from marketing. So you don't have to have a marketing background in order to take this specialization. If you do have a marketing background, amazing. Uh, we will, um, you, you will have, I guess, a lot more um, to share from your experience, but of course you will have a lot more to learn. Um, and those of you who wants to learn a little bit about marketing and don't have this background, this also will be a great option for you. So it's options for both, um, uh, for people that are coming from the area and also people that have no idea and want to master a little bit about, about this world of marketing and digital marketing. In terms of the technology and information management, uh, you will learn here how to use IT and data to generate strategic advantage for your companies. Um, it will expose you to the most up-to-date knowledge and you will gain practical and theoretical experience. Um, and again, the same as I said, for the marketing, you don't have to come with a background in this um, specific area. Um, we will teach you everything, and this is to um, allow students that want to master a specific subject um, to do that while you study. And as I said, as a reminder, if you don't want to choose, or if you're not sure, you can always do, um, you can always take courses from both specialization and take the general MBA pathway. Um, one more great option that we offer throughout this degree uh, is for those of you who wants to visit Israel, either if, you, if you've been here before or if you want to do it uh, throughout your studies, we're offering one elective course that we call Doing Business in Israel. It's an optional one and a half week course um, here in Tel Aviv on campus where you can come and visit us and take a course that will teach you about the Israel entrepreneurial um, ecosystem. We will visit startups, we will do cultural tours, and you'll, you'll have the opportunity to meet with leading business professionals and, and of course with our professor, professors here within the, um, within the faculty. Um, it's a great opportunity for you, I think, um, if, if you're able. Again, it's optional because we understand that not everyone are able to leave their job or other commitments, um, and maybe not everyone um, are, um, are willing to do the, the trip if you live so far away. So this is optional and you can do that. And if you choose not to do that, then there's always another um, elective course that you can, you can choose instead of that. But it's a great um, course that we actually offer today to students from all around the world. Um, coming from um, the top business schools in the world to study with us about how to do business in Israel. And I think it's a, a great opportunity for a lot of you. Um, in terms of career opportunities, our career uh, management center will provide our online st students with personal online consulting services. So of course we understand that if you're doing an MBA, um, that's what we see on campus, but also in the online, the whole point um, in most cases is to advance your career. Um, so we do have a career center that specifically is working with the business school students. Um, so they, they can help you with your CV, they can help you prepare for an interview and to uh, teach you how to present yourself. Uh, they can assist with networking and to give you workshops about different um, subjects as LinkedIn and other social media options. Um, that's what they do. They do it with our on-campus students and they and they also happy to do it with the online students as much as um, as much as possible and depends on you how much you, you want to be involved. 
Um, our degree qualifies you for several managerial role, uh, roles and leadership level careers. And this is just an example. We, we contacted our, the, head of, the heads of the specializations that I've mentioned before and asked them to give us examples of uh, roles that either students or alumni are taking after completing their, um, their degree here. Um, and here are a few options. And of course, for you, um, the, the great thing about stu studying uh, online is to be able to do that and advance your career while studying. You don't have to stop uh, working. You don't have to stop any other commitments that you have. And you can advance yourself um, during your studies. And it's, um, it's a great opportunity to do that. So just to summarize everything that I just said, and uh, of course, as, as I said before, you're welcome to ask any questions. Um, so why should you basically study with us? Um, our degree is relevant and directly applicable to the current work environment. That's what we do um, on the ground and exactly what we are going to do um, with the online. Um, we give you hands-on experience learning through real world, problems. Um, there's going to be extracurricular for you. Um, and again, it's your decision which one you want to take. And if you ha don't have time, a lot of it will be recorded for you. Um, we give you personal approach. As I said, professors are going to be available at least once a week. And if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one session with them. They're always open to do that. Uh, you can always email them. You can contact us, the directors of the program, Shai and I. Uh, so very, we try, we understand that the online can be sometimes tricky because it gives you flexibility, but maybe sometimes you need the personal approach. So that's exactly what we want to do. And, and I think we're succeeding so far in doing that. Um, you can enjoy both worlds, as I said. Um, we give you the option to do 100% online asynchronically this degree. So if you don't have time or if you don't want to communicate with anyone um, live, then it's okay. We, we understand and appreciate that, but we also give you the opportunity to meet and communicate with your classmates and your lecturers. And from our experience currently, we find that very successful. Our students are, we always do the, um, the online sessions uh, once a week with the professor and almost all of our students are always logging in, even though sometimes the time zones are a little bit tricky and all of them are online and it's, it's amazing to see them. So we find that uh, very, very um, uh, successful for a lot of students. Of course, as I said, there's the optional visit to Tel Aviv, one and a half week of, uh, of a trip to the uh, what we call the startup nation and to learn about the doing business in Israel. And of course, we want to teach you um, from our expert professors um, and give you their unique point of view, because at the end of the day, if you want to study finance or strategy, Today, nowadays, you can always go on, on YouTube and you can probably find a course and, and learn it there. The unique part of it is to give you our professors uh, unique point of view and from their experience, these are the best professors that have been teaching in the underground program for many years now. Um, and it's not just, you know, it, it's, it's because of their expertise that we are the number one choice in Israel for students and um, we're doing the same in the online. The, um, in most cases, the same professors are actually teaching in the online. Um, so it's a great opportunity to, for you to learn from them. So I spoke a lot and I think I, I, I will uh, hand it to, uh, to Jessica right now to see if, if you guys had questions and, and uh, if I can answer some of them, um, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Hila. I think uh, amazing amount of information there and appreciate that we've um, got a few people that joined us a little bit after the start as well. So you might have some questions on some of the initial things you went through. Um, just as a quick reminder for anyone who did miss it at the beginning, we have the Q&A function open at the bottom of your screens. So please do feel free to submit your questions through there um, and we'll go through those as well. 
Um, I did have some that were submitted earlier, which I thought we could get started with, um, just to give you an opportunity to, to fill in any that you do have. Um, so you talked, and, and it was good to hear you talking about the, the options in terms of like flexibility of you know being able to study live or, or not, and depending on the student situation. Can you talk more about the opportunities that students have to interact and network with each other and people from different you know places around the world? Yeah, sure. So currently we have students from really all around the world. We have students in, in Canada, in the US, we have uh, students in, in China, Singapore, South Africa, uh, really from all around the world. And um, the best place for them to communicate is um, through those live sessions that we do. Um, so each, as I said, we have two courses in each term. So twice a week, they can uh, go live with each of the professors of each course and then communicate with their classmates and with the professor and ask questions and, and learn a little bit more about what they already did on their own through the um, through the online system. So this is a great opportunity for them to do that. And we also, in most courses, I think what our professors are trying to do is to do a lot of teamwork. So a lot of the um, papers that students need to uh, submit and um, uh, course assignments are done in teams because we understand that, I would say, as Shai says, in today's world, in most jobs, um, it's very com we don't see that a lot that people are not working in teams. It's very, very common to work in a team. So we're trying to do that as well in the online. So a lot of our students are actually communicating with each other while um, completing and submission uh, submitting papers and assignments. So that's also a great opportunity. And as I said, we are doing a lot of extracurriculum uh, activities. We're trying to add as much as possible, and we're happy to hear from our current students and future students about their ideas of what would be, you know, the best subject they want to hear from, because we have so many experts and so many people that um, can give their knowledge and share information with them. So we're doing, we're doing that. We're, we're bringing um, many of our lecturers to give um, sessions about different subjects. We're, we're doing the career services uh, workshops and um, everything possible that students are looking for, uh, we're happy to include. Um, and I think that's the best way for students to communicate live. Uh, but of course, through chats and, and, um, and emails, that's, that's always another option for those of you who are not um, that flexible to do the live sessions. Great, thank you. Um, a question just come in that's probably relatively related to current students. Um, and I'm not, I've, I'm, you may not know the answer to this, but um, what's the average age of students that are currently engaged in the online program? Hmm, that's a tricky one. <laughs> I didn't check, but we actually have a really diverse kind of a group. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't check and I, I didn't ask them for their age. <laughs> <laughs> It's inappropriate, but it looks to me that maybe our youngest student would be around the age of 26 and the oldest would be around the age of 60. So quite a, um, a wide range of, of people. Um, I would say that the average would be around 30. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that's that's a, I think that I feel that on the ground, that's probably the same around the age of 30, maybe a little bit younger, but uh, that's more or less the, the average. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, knowing the students that are on the program, if they're around that sort of age, they've got some experience that they can draw from to bring to the program, but also they're in roles that they can you know utilize what they're learning in the program every day. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. We we do have one track that we accept students um, uh, without. Um, I, I didn't really talk about the admission criteria um, because I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with the details. But uh, we we do have everything on on the website. But one of the tracks that we offer is for students who have. Um, a large um, vast work experience so more than seven years of work experience then we accept those students without a GMAT exam or 
any other standardized uh, um, exam. Um, and we do, we do have students that are, um, who got accepted um, based on their work experience. And they, of course, they have a lot to, um, um, to, um, to share with their classmates uh, because of this experience. And, and of course, you know, also the students that are a little bit younger and maybe have a little bit less of work experience, they can learn from each other. And sometimes someone who is who has a little bit less work experience, they always, uh, they have uh, their own points of views can add to a discussion. It's always a good thing to have people from, from you know, different kinds of backgrounds. Mm, yeah, definitely. Thank you. We've had another co uh, question come in um, asking if they, students that study online have the option to use the library or I guess any of the campus facilities at Tel Aviv. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, they we will give you some specific access because you need some access to um, uh, to uh, connect from from abroad, basically to the uh, to the university services. Um, and one of them is actually the library. And yes, we we do have, give access to that. And you, but I. To be honest, nowadays the the library services are mostly open for everyone. So, uh, but we do have access for specific articles and things like that. So students will have special access as uh, TAU students. Yeah, no problem. Amazing. Um, another one's just come in as well. I'll, I'll do the ones that are coming in live and then go back to the ones we had kind of submitted before. But um, what's the time commitment? requested or I guess required or best recommended um in, in terms of completing uh um I like guess per, per week roughly what kind of hours would you suggest somebody spends studying yeah so um uh, for well it depends on the course we we offer basically I would I would split um the type of courses that we teach to uh one credit course and two credit course um, two credit course are a little bit heavier and then they will require you a little bit a little bit more time but we basically uh, tell students that per week they should expect around five and a half hours for one credit course and um, uh, double that for the two credit course so that's more or less what we understand but Sometimes you know uh, you might have to have to work a little bit more. It depends on on yourself. So for some students, we did receive some feedback that it took them a little bit longer to read some articles and and um, uh, because their English was a little bit um, they they needed to refine their English. Uh, but um, but of course you know it's that's the uh, that's what we understand from core and student. That's more or less the amount of time that they that they spend per week. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so just going back to some of the questions we had submitted previously, then. Um, you mentioned about the specializations, giving students a chance to, you know, tailor their degree, which is uh, fantastic. When would students need to make a decision if they wanted to follow a general pathway versus marketing, for example? So we want to give you time. You don't have to decide right at the beginning because we understand that students needs to start their study um, process and then make you know their decision a little bit later. So we would say around the time that you finish um, with your core courses, that's when um, we will ask you to make a decision uh, because uh, right when you basically finish your core courses, that's when you'll start to uh, take your elective courses. We might be able to be flexible then uh, as well, but I would recommend around the time that you finish the, the core courses. Brilliant. We've had another question just come in around tuition fees. Um, asking around like the pay as you go option. Um, so obviously we mentioned the total fee at the beginning um, of the, the conversation at, at 25,900 US dollars, but there is the option to pay per credit. Um, so I think that breaks down at the moment at $925 for a one credit course. So your two credit courses would work out at 1,850 US dollars. So depending on if you're studying all three credits at the same time um, and then like how you progress, that's how much um, you would be expected to pay per credit or per course. 
great memory with the number. Thank God, <laughs> thank God I have you here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Um, so we had another question around, um, you know, obviously online is a fantastic option. We've mentioned a lot of the benefits already around that. Um, but we have uh, students asking around the, the main differences that they can expect between studying online and maybe studying on campus. Um, you know, most people have done an undergraduate on campus and maybe it's the first time they've studied online. From your perspective, what would you say some of the main differences are? Well, I'll start with the things that I know that are there's no different at all. And uh, that's what was, was the most important thing for us when we decided to build this degree to, to create it. Um, the one thing that we did not want to compromise on was the level of teaching and the content that you get and the degree itself. So it's it actually I didn't mention it before, but once completing a degree in our online program, the certificate will not say you completed an online degree. It's the same certificate as if you were studying here on the ground, meaning that it's duplicated. We're basically duplicating everything that we teach you on the ground to the online. So in that sense, we did not compromise. And as I said, a lot of the professors that are teaching on the ground are also teaching in our online. Um, so for that, there's no difference. Where there is a difference, well, I, I guess you can assume that online is different. You're, you're not able to come here to campus and, and, and sit in class and, um, and you know, sit with your uh, classmates in the same room. That, that's one thing that you won't be able to do. Um, we also offer two specializations within the, within this degree, um, but in the underground program, there are a few more. Um, this is an ongoing kind of a, a platform that we're doing here um, in Israel, basically. It's, a, it's the first 100% um, online degree that was approved by the Council of Higher Education, our degree. So, we are working to include more and more specializations, but we started with one, with the two that I've mentioned that we know are the most, um, I would say most popular or most interested, interesting for core and student. That's what we understand. Um, so that's another difference. And I think other than that, we're really trying to um, to include everything possible that we give on the, to our underground students in the online. The platform is, is different, so we have to be flexible and, um, and, and to sometimes be very creative. But in terms of the degree and the way it's built, it's exactly the same. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so we've had another question come in, and I'm um, sort of keeping an eye on time at the same Time is going through these questions. So feel free, keep asking any questions you've got. Um, in a moment, I will launch a couple of poll questions that you'll see come up on your screen as well. So feel free to please answer those for us as well. Um, but this question is around for those of uh, those people who, for whom English isn't their like, first language, isn't their native language, what type of certification is um, required and accepted? Oh. Okay, that's a tricky one because there's a lot of details there. Um, but um, basically, it, it really depends. If you, if you can complete a BA degree uh, from a university that the degree itself was taught in English, then that would be enough for us, basically. Um, if you didn't, then um, you will have to do either a TOEFL or um, there's another one that I forgot. IELTS. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Jessica, and there are a few more that we accept um, mm -hmm. as, as um, uh, English level uh, proficiency. Um, I'm trying to think if there are more. Um, I think this this is basically it. If you graduated from a university within Israel, we also consider your um, uh, your first degree as enough for us uh, in terms of your English level, because in Israel, um, we check and, and we make sure that students are exempt from English during their first degree. So that's also uh, will allow you to, um, um, to get accepted without an English uh, exam. So there's a lot, um, a lot of details in that, uh, 
in that subject, uh, all of them are actually written on our website. Uh, but if you need more information, of course, communicate with us and we'll give you all the information. Um, but I think what I just mentioned, those are the main, main things. Yeah, there's lots of options, like you said, isn't there, Healer? And if you've got a specific scenario or situation that you're um, wanting to ask about, the best thing to do would be to email the address on screen at the moment. So that's our admissions and enrollment team. Um, so one of my team will come back to you with a response in terms of, you know, whether you need to do another test, what your required level would be. If you have got any documentation as well, send that with your email. So if you've done, um, so somebody's asking there about a Cambridge certifications, so that is one that we accept. If you've done one of those, if you can email the address on screen with a copy of the certificate, we can look and make sure that that does meet the requirements. And then we can talk to you about other options as well. Um, we, you know, we didn't really talk much about the uh, kind of uh, admission support that you'd get before starting, but we've got a team of dedicated <clears throat> student recruitment coordinators who work with you from initial inquiry up until the day that you start your programme. So they're there to help you assess your eligibility, talk through your motivations, understand, you know, is this the right programme for you, give you advice and guidance on how this programme would fit in your life um, as well and answer any questions you've got, but also to help you submit the strongest possible application. So they're all on hand and, and able to, to help. We've got the poll on screen at the moment will help us, um, you know, reach out to any of you that do want some guidance. So please do, you know, we've had quite a few responses on that already. I'll leave it up for a couple more minutes for you to, to respond, but we'd love to be able to speak with you about your interest in more detail and, and your eligibility. Um, we've actually had one more question coming around graduation. So somebody asking, are we allowed to graduate and to participate in graduation in person at Tel Aviv, or do we just get sent the diploma um, to our home address? It's a, it's a good one, actually, Jess, because um, we are currently, uh, there is no graduation uh, for the online students on campus, uh, but we are discussing this option. So I can't promise anything at this point, but uh, we do understand um, that students want to come for a graduation and uh, maybe you want to bring your entire family to Israel. Mm -hmm nice trip and, and do that. Uh, so we're discussing this option. Um, and, and of course, uh, we will let you know, but for, for now, it's not something that I can, I can officially say yes. Um, it, it might require um, a few more confirmations from, from the, uh, from the head of the university, from, from, um, from the rector's office and, and so on. Um, but, uh, but we are discussing it and we do understand the, uh, the value of that. So, um, so definitely something that uh, we can get back to you on that. Um, if, if important for you, then, um, then again, we, we see the value. So we, we want to do that, but uh, it might require a few more, um, a few more um, uh, discussions with, uh, with the university to, to make this happen. Great. Thank you. And as you said, there's so many other options as well to to visit the campus during your studies as well. So at least you get the opportunity initially, um, which is great. So I'm going to leave the, the poll questions up for just another um, 30 seconds or so. We've come to the end of our questions. So like I said before, please do feel free to visit our website or contact our admissions team on the email address or telephone number that's on your screen at the moment. Um, we would love to hear, you know, your thoughts on this session, if there's any additional questions that you might have. But I do want to personally say thank you, Hila, for your time and going through all the details on the programme. Um, I know we've had a lot of questions as well, and I'm sure people have taken a lot of information. Um, so thank you very much for today. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Perfect. Well, um, thanks to all our attendees as well for joining us. We hope to speak with you again soon and see you studying on our programme. If you do have any other questions, like I said, reach out. If they're directly for Gila, I can always pass them on via that email address. So feel free to contact us. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to hearing from you all soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.